It is always the same when custard forecast nasty weather. Looks like rain, thundered custard. One tiny cloud, Rhubarb answered, quick as lightning. We'll see. What are you doing? asked the cat. Not sure yet, said Rhubarb. Doing nothing. Relax. Take a page out of my book, grinned Custard, expert on nothing. Maybe I will, said Rhubarb with a nod. Oh, Rhubarb, what a lovely surprise, darling. A nothing day, and such a lovely day for doing nothing. It was a lovely day. Yes, bellowed Rhubarb as he sat up with a start. Take a page out of Custard's book, he yelled. Oh, Rhubarb, you are a fidget. Relax, darling, cooed Poodle Princess. I can't, said Rhubarb. You've had an idea, warbled Poodle Princess. Yes, a book, grinned Rhubarb. How to Relax by Custard, the world's most laid-back cat. Ah, oh, no, too busy, Custard wailed. You'd be rich and famous. Never have to work again. But I don't work. Oh, yes, of course, said Rhubarb, as Custard went on to explain that he couldn't write, spell, oh, or type. All you have to do is think your book into my computer. Software will do the rest, beamed Rhubarb. Oh, Rhubarb, darling, you're so clever, said Poodle Princess. Well, here we are at my book writing and publishing centre, Rhubarb explained, while Custard sank into the comfortable old chair and Rhubarb had to remind him why he was here. We want a well-written, action-packed book about relaxation, no mucking about, said Rhubarb. And Custard began. <laughs> Meanwhile, under the shade of the old conquer tree, the friends were very relaxed indeed. It was a lovely day to do nothing. Rhubarb couldn't keep still, of course, so he hit the spy cam key on his lapdog. So far, so good. Rhubarb's bone phone rang. It was Parrot, the printer, asking how many books to print. Heaps, a million, Rhubarb said, and turned to Mouse. Do you know, that Parrot asked me six times how many books, he gawped. Parrots do that, said Mouse. Right now, my computer will be draining that cat's brain dry, Rhubarb assured Mouse, as the pair found Custard fast asleep and snoring. Snoring? They yelled, and Custard jumped out of the chair. Where's our book? The pair demanded. You mean my book? Cringed Custard. OK, your book, said Rhubarb, and Mouse nodded nervously. My book is finished grinned Custard. Instantly, How to Relax by Custard, the world's most laid-back cat, filled the screen. Book launch today, on the lawn at four o'clock. Book launch, Rhubarb barked, and the birds went silly. A good crowd soon gathered, and by four, the garden was teeming with readers, anxious to get hold of Custard's book. And then it happened. The books arrived. Books sign here said Postdoc. <coughs> Is that a million books? blinked Rhubarb. No, enough for your book launch. Thousands more on the way, said Postdoc. For more, more? But it's a mountain already, whispered Mouse, and Rhubarb was library silent. Worse was to come. When Rhubarb opened a book, the page was covered in Zs, as was the next, and the next. Mouse picked up where Rhubarb left off. Zs, page after page, book after book. All Zs, millions of them. It was a disaster. Oh, I almost forgot. Here's the printer's bill, said Postdog, and Mouse fainted. <gasps> Custard, Rhubarb choked. It's, it's boring, snoring, from cover to cover. Relax, grinned Custard, and signed his first copy. 
How to Relax by Custard, the world's most laid-back cat. I'm uh, signing it with a Z today, instead of my usual X. <laughs> he tittered. The autographing over, readers began to realise that they'd bought lots of Zs, nothing more. And the cultured crowd soon turned into an angry mob. Then, out of the blue, silence. Custer's books had been read from Z to Z. Well, what do you think of that? beamed Custer as he walked between rows and rows of sleeping readers. Nerve-wracking, groaned Rhubarb. Read my book. Relax, Custer was counselling as the snoring began. Quietly at first, but as the slumbering readers sleep deeply, the Zeds became so thunderous, snoring so loud, that windows began to break, alarms went off, and dogs barked themselves silly. Sounds like Custer's book is turning out to be a nightmare, darling, said Poodle Princess. Especially for rhubarb, said Moggy Malone, as the kettle boiled and post dog's weasels carried on delivering the rest of the books. Rhubarb, Poodle Princess, Custard and Moggy Malone were enjoying a late afternoon tea under the old conquer tree. Heavy looking suitcases were sprawled about, waiting as always for the beginning or the end of another jaunt. Today it was the start of a journey. Poodle Princess and Moggy Malone were off on a few days tropical holiday and were talking animatedly about sunsets, exotic islands and handsome sea dogs. I sometimes wonder how rhubarb and custard will cope, darling, said Poodle Princess. Oh, here we go. Now they're off, said rhubarb as post dogs taxi arrived. Hugs and kisses over and the girls gone, rhubarb picked up his bone phone to remind Mouse about tomorrow's plans to harness time itself, said goodnight to custard and went off for an early night. Tossing and turning on the fence during an uncomfortable night, Custard opened a weary eye and noticed tiny electrical sparks, tweaks and twiddles dancing on the night air. It was the shed. The beautiful silver sounds were coming from the shed. Oh, what have we here? Snivel Custard. It was Rhubarb's computer quietly talking to itself as the world slept. Heart pounding, Custard creaked the shed door wider and peeked inside. Oh, well, 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 grinned Custard and was instantly wide awake. Sitting in front of the computer, Custard soon began to feel very much at home in Rhubarb's chair. And with the most mischievous, naughty grin, he pressed the computer start button and in next to no time, was in another world. Welcome, Rhubarb. Your wish is my command. Oh, how corny can you get? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get on with it. Entering star date and sonic time zone now. When the little bone is on three and the large bone is on twelve, it will be three o'clock precisely. Ah, uh, so this is the kind of clever, sophisticated stuff that goes on in here, eh? My, oh my. The heavens are quite active tonight. What do you think, Mouse? said Custard, in a perfect rhubarb kind of way. I'd say we have a scan around the Milky Way, he answered in a voice that sounded more like Mouse than Mouse. Cut! Oh, frightened myself then. <laughs> Did you? My word. Then quite out of the blue, and without the slightest idea of what he was doing, Custard's usually clumsy fingers began to dance lightly over the computer keyboard. And slowly, the shed roof ports opened, and majestically, the sophisticated deep space scanning equipment blossomed towards the heavens. Truly touched, 
Custard sat regally at the keyboard for a few magical moments. Suddenly, there it was. Transfixed, the humble earthbound cat stared. And then slowly and zombie-like, Custard walked out into the garden and stood silently and gazed at the delicious Milky Way and beyond. When suddenly, there it was. It was the most breathtaking sight that the startled cat had ever set eyes upon. It was massive. Its light was like diamonds and stars. Its brilliance was humbling, and Custard noticed that his knees were wobbling. Oh, my goodness gracious. Great shows of pilchards, Custard muttered as he realized what it was. He blinked, and again, it was true. A great illuminated shed was hovering right over Rubar's garden, as though standing on a shaft of piercing light, so unnaturally bright. Oh my, oh my, it looks like trouble. Oh, oh, what on earth have you done? muttered Custard to himself. A door opened in the heavenly shed. A light beam stairway shone into the garden. When suddenly, there they were. Bird-like creatures hovering. Hovering and making electric chattering noises all over the garden. Custard stood stone silent in the shade of the old conker tree. Then it spoke. The shed spoke. What do you find? And in unison, as one, all at once, the bird thing said, Nothing. There is nothing here. Then it was gone. There was nothing. It was gone, and Custard stood with his mouth open, and then slowly sat down. As the sun peeped over the fence, Rhubarb jogged from the house while doing deep breathing exercises, as well as other more sophisticated exercises at the same time. Healthy stuff? Clever stuff? Who knows? Morning, old thing. You been there all night? No, Custard said, telling Rhubarb a whopper. I... Just got up. Are you sure? You look a bit off colour this morning. Sound odd, too. Don't you think he looks a bit off colour? said Rhubarb in a curious kind of way, and the birds all laughed. <laughs> or did they? Were they? The birds. Rhubarb was walking in his garden on a day that could only be described as perfect flying weather an aviator's dream. Big jets scribbled new vapour trails all over a freshly squeegeed sky. He felt the wind in his fur. Ah! Oh, sorry. Oh, Rhubarb. You're so wonderfully clumsy when you're busy writing a play, darling, cooed Poodle Princess. He was still looking up. You know, Poodles, Rhubarb began. Oh, Rhubarb, I know what you're going to say, darling. Your new play is for me, she flooded, but Rhubarb had other things on his mind. Sitting in front of his computer in a flight of fancy, Rhubarb marveled over the pictures of his magnificent model airplane. His love of flying all started with a spike, two strap-on wings, and a garden swing. A long time ago. Waking from his daydream, Rhubarb's think waves began to flow once more. Then he turned to an equally important design job, the trophy. When Custard arrived. Have you ever made a model aeroplane? Rhubarb asked, knowing the answer. What? muttered Custard. I'm planning a model aeroplane show. Aerobatics, loop the loop, that sort of stuff. Interested? There'd be a prize, Rhubarb added. What, you mean money? No, said Rhubarb. A beautiful trophy, which will really be a scrumptious golden sponge cake. I say, an air show. 
Help me in, squeaked Mouse with great enthusiasm. Custard, can I put you down as a yes? Rhubarb queried. Uh, well, aero bats and things, you say? Aerobatics, model aeroplanes, remote controlled. You won't have to do anything, said Rhubarb. And with that, Custard scuttled off and said he'd think about it. Now for Moggy Malone and Poodle Princess, said Rhubarb, and picked up his bone fur. Poodles are... No, no, you won't have to race an aeroplane, explained Rhubarb. No, Moggy will not have to drive an aeroplane. I just wanted to know if you two would present the trophy to the winner of my air show, said Rhubarb. And with that, Poodle Princess said she'd ask Moggy. <coughs> Finally, said Rhubarb. They've agreed to present the trophy, he sighed. Ugh, after all that waiting, whispered Mouse to himself. As Rhubarb's alarm clock marked four o'clock, model planes and their excited owners lined up at the end of the old strip of carpet that Rhubarb had put out as a runway. The atmosphere buzzed with aeroplane chatter like, George, Roger, over and out. Well done, said Rhubarb in a high altitude kind of way, as Rabbit's floppy looking aircraft volunteered into place. Ah, oh, Mo, love the headlight. Wizard, what? I say, rookie. Red. Ah, a proper kite, what? Charlie, good luck. <laughs> Ciao. Meanwhile, Custard was on the other side of the fence, doing a deal with some bother birds. He didn't know their names, only that their leader was called Feather. OK, you know exactly what to do, Custard whispered, as Feather climbed into his flying boots and zipped up his sinister flying jacket. Yeah, snorted Feather, who now resembled a foul-looking black aeroplane. And with that, Custard pulled back a loose plank in the fence, and the evil Feather hopped through. Oi! Feather! No hopping! Remember, you are an aeroplane, Custard whispered hoarsely, and Feather lined up with the other model planes. Ahem! Ahem, Drubob. Welcome to the Model Aeroplane Show. Points will be awarded for graceful flying, he announced, and the race got off with a bang. Everything OK? smiled Rhubarb. Poodle Princess and Moggy Malone nodded a yes. Neither wanted to tell Rhubarb that they'd seen an aeroplane running. Finally, with the air show over and all planes safely on the ground, Rhubarb addressed the afternoon crowd and those magnificent model makers with their splendid flying machines. I have great delight to announce Custard as winner of the... Excuse me, said Rabbit. Custard's black aeroplane is eating the trophy. You there! You're not a bird. You're not supposed to be a plane. That's cheating, you sticker! shouted Rhubarb and presented Rabbit with what was left of the delicious trophy. <laughs> and you, forget flying, you're grounded! he went on. And where you are, you old rot! And the birds cheered and flew around in circles, and everyone. <laughs> Whiz! The home of ABCs, 1, 2, 3s, and all your favourite kids' TV characters. Now let's find kids' TV. Or I can press this microphone. Whiz. That's how easy it is. <laughs>